In late 2009, when the industry was just beginning to offer so-called converged infrastructure, CI, Nutanix was skating to the puck, so to speak. Meaning, unlike converged infrastructure, which essentially bolted together compute and networking and storage into a single SKU that was very hardware centric, Nutanix was focused on creating HCI, hyper-converged infrastructure, which was a software-led architecture that unified the key elements of data center infrastructure. Now, while both approaches save time and money, HCI took the concept to new heights of cost savings and simplicity. Hyper-converged infrastructure became a staple of private clouds, creating a cloud-like experience on-prem. As the public cloud evolved and grew, more and more customers are now taking a cloud-first approach to IT. So the challenge becomes, how do you remodel your IT house so that you can connect your on-prem workloads to the cloud to both simplify cloud migration while at the same time creating an identical experience across your estates. Hello and welcome to this special program, Accelerate Hybrid Cloud with Nutanix and Microsoft, made possible by, by Nutanix and produced by theCUBE. I'm Dave Vellante, one of your hosts today. Now in this session, we'll hear how Nutanix is evolving its initial vision of simplifying infrastructure deployment and management to support modern applications by partnering with Microsoft to enable that consistent experience that we talked about earlier to extend hybrid cloud to Microsoft Azure and take advantage of cloud native tooling. Now, what's really important to stress here, and you'll hear this in our second segment, substantive engineering work has gone into this partnership. A lot of partnerships are sealed with a press release. We sometimes call it a Barney deal. You know, I love you, you love me. Like Barney, the once popular children's dinosaur character. We dig into the critical engineering aspects that enable that seamless connection between on-prem infrastructure and the public cloud. Now in our first segment, Lisa Martin talks to Alvaro Solis, who is the Vice President of Global ISD Commercial Solutions at Microsoft, and Michael Leschica, who is the Vice President of Business Development for the Cloud and Database Partner Ecosystem at Nutanix. Now after that, Lisa will kick it back to me in our Boston studios to speak with Eric Lockard, who's the Corporate Vice President of Microsoft Azure Specialized, along with Thomas Cornelli, who is the Senior Vice President of Products at Nutanix, and Indu Carey, who's the Senior Vice President of Engineering for NCI and NC2 at Nutanix. And we'll dig deeper into the announcement and its salient features. Thanks for being with us. We hope you enjoy the program. Over to Lisa. Hi everyone, welcome to our event, Accelerate Hybrid Cloud with Nutanix and Microsoft. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and I've got two great guests here with me to give you some exciting news. Please welcome Alvaro Solis, the Vice President of Global ISV Commercial Solutions at Microsoft, and Michael Leschichka, VP of Business Development Cloud and Database Partner Ecosystem at Nutanix. Guys, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining me today. Great to be here. Thank you, Lisa, looking forward. Yeah, so Avar, let's go ahead and start with you. Talk to me from your lens. What are you seeing in terms of the importance of the role of the, the ISV ecosystem and really helping customers make their business outcomes successful? Oh, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation and thank you, Michael and the Nutanix team for the partnership. You know, the, the ISV ecosystem plays a critical role uh, as we support our customers and enable them in their digital transformation journeys to create value, to move at their own pace, and more importantly, to be sure that every one of them, as they transform themselves, um, have the right set of solutions for the long term uh, with high differentiation, cost effectiveness, and resiliency, especially given the times that we're living in. Yeah, that resiliency is getting more and more critical as each day goes on. Alvaro, sticking with you, we got Microsoft Ignite going on today. What are some of the key themes that we should expect this year and how do they align to Microsoft's vision and strategy? Ah, great question, thank you. When you think about it, we're going to talk about the topics that are very relevant and our customers have asked us to go deeper and, and share with them. 
One of them, as you may imagine, is how can we do more with less using Azure, especially given the current times that we're living in. The, the business context has changed so much. They have different imperative, different, different amount of pressure and priorities. How can we help? How can we combine the platform, the value that Microsoft can bring and our Microsoft ISV partner ecosystem to deliver more value and enable them to have their own journey? Actually, in that frame, if I may, we are making this announcement today with Nutanix. I mean, the Nutanix cloud clusters are often the fastest way on which customers will be able to do that journey into the cloud because it's very consistent with environments that they already know and use on premise. And once they go into the cloud, then they have all the benefits of scale, agility, resiliency, security, and cost benefits that they're looking for. So that topic, and this type of announcements will be a big part of what we're doing Ignite. Then Exciting. Michael, let's bring you into the conversation now. Sure. Big milestone um, of our RDTs that the general availability of Nutanix cloud clusters on Azure. Talk to us about that from Nutanix's perspective. And also give me a little bit of color, Michael, on the partnership, the relationship. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So uh, we actually entered a partnership a couple of years ago. So we've been working on this solution for quite a while. But really our ultimate goal from day one was really to make our customers' journeys to hybrid cloud simpler and faster. So really for both companies, I think um, our goal is really being that trusted partner for our customers in their innovation journey. And as Alvaro mentioned, you know, in the current macroeconomic conditions, really our customers really care about growing their top line, but they have to be mindful of their bottom line as well. So they're really looking to leverage their existing investments in technology skill sets and leverage the most out of them. So the things like, for example, cost of operations and keeping those things consistent across on premises and the cloud are really important as customers are thinking about growth initiatives that they want to implement. And of course, uh, going to Azure public cloud is an important one as they think about flexibility, scale, and modernizing their apps. And of course, as we, as we look at the customer uh, landscape, a lot of customers have an on-prem on footprint, right? Whether that's for regulatory reasons or business or other technical reasons. So hybrid cloud has really become an ideal operating model for a lot of the customers that we see today. So really our partnership with Microsoft is critical because together I really do see our uh, us together simplifying that journey to the public cloud and making sure that it's not only easy, but secure and really seamless. And really, I see our partnership um, as bringing the strengths of each company together, right? So Nutanix, of course, is known in the past for its hyper-converged infrastructure and really breaking down the silos between networking, compute, storage, and simplifying that infrastructure and operations. Our customers love that for the products and our, our NPS score of 90 over the last seven years. And if you look at Azure and Microsoft, they're truly best in class cloud infrastructure with cutting edge services and innovation and really global scale. So when you think about those two combinations, right, that's really powerful for customers to be able to take their applications and whether they're on-prem, in the cloud, or even at the edge, and really combining all these various hybrid scenarios. And I think that's something that's pretty unique that we're able to offer to our joint customers. Let's dig into that uniqueness of our bringing you back into the conversation. You guys are meeting customers where they are, helping them to accelerate their cloud transformations, delivering that consistency, you know, whether they're on-prem, uh, in Azure, in, in the cloud. Talk to me, Avaro, from Microsoft's perspective about the significance of this announcement. I understand that the, the preview was oversubscribed, so the demand from your joint customers is clear. Thank you, Lisa, Michael. Personally, I'm very proud, and at the company, we're very proud of the work that we did together with Nutanix. When you see two companies coming together with the mission of empowering customers and with a customer at the center, and trying to solve real problems, in this case, how to drive hybrid cloud and what is the best approach for them, opening more opportunities is, is, is extremely inspiring. And of course, the welcome reception that we have from customer reiterates that we're generating that value. Now, when you combine the power of Azure, that is very well known by resiliency, the scale, the performance, the elasticity, and the range of services, 
uh, with the reality of companies that might have hundreds or even thousands of different applications and data sources, those cloud journeys are very different for each and every one of them. So how do we combine our capabilities between Nutanix and Microsoft to be sure that that hybrid cloud journey that every government is going to take uh, can be simplified. You can take away the risk, the complexity on that transformation creates tons of value. And that's what our customers are asking us today. Either because they're trying to move and modernize their environment to Azure, or they're bringing their, you know, Kubernetes, Arc enabled Kubernetes services and cluster and data services on premise to the Nutanix platform. We together can combine and solve for that, uh, adding more value for any scenario that customers may have. And this is not once and done. This is not that we build it, we forget it. It's a partnership that keeps evolving and also includes work that we do with our solution, sales, alliances, and go-to-market teams to be sure that the customers have the best service and support to make to, to create the outcomes that they're asking us to deliver. Talk to me a little bit about the customers that were in the beta. As we mentioned, Alvaro, the, the preview was oversubscribed. So as I talked about earlier, the demand is clearly there. Talk to me about... Some of the customers in beta, you can even anonymize them or maybe talk about them by industry, but what were some of the, the key things that came to these two companies looking to, to solve, get to the cloud faster, um, be able to deliver the same sets of services with familiarity so that from a, they're able to do more with less? Maybe I could take that one out of our beetle mind. Um, but yeah, so like, like, we, like we mentioned, Lisa, you know, we've had a great preview, oversubscribe. We had lots of, not only customers, but also partners battle testing the solution. Um, and, you know, we're obviously very pleased now to have GA and offer to everyone else. But one of our customers, Hamburger, was really looking forward to seeing how do they leverage NC2 and Azure to, like I mentioned, reduce that work um, workload mi migration and the risk for that and making sure, hey, some of the applications, maybe we are going to go and rewrite them, refactor them uh, to take them natively to Azure, but there's others where we want to lift and shift them to Azure. But like I mentioned, it's not just customers, right? We've been working with partners like PCS and Citrix, um, where they share the same goal as Microsoft and Nutanix, providing that superior customer experience, where whatever the operating model might be for that customer. So they're going to be leveraging NC2 on Azure um, to really provide those hybrid um, cloud experiences for their solutions on top of building on top of um, the, the work that we've done together. So this really kind of highlights the power of that, Alvaro, the power of the ISB ecosystem and what you're all able to do together to really help customers achieve the outcomes that they individually need. Absolutely. I mean, we do strongly believe that when you partner properly with an ISV, you get to the, to the magical frame where one plus one equals three or more because you are combining superpowers and you're solving the problem on behalf of the customer so they can focus on their business. And this is a wonderful example, a very inspiring one, where when you see the risk, the complexity that all these projects normally have, and Michael did a great job framing some of them, and the difference that they have now by having NC2 on Azure, uh, it's night and day. And we are fully committed to keep driving this innovation, this partnership on service of our customers and our partner ecosystem, because at the same time, making our partners more successful, generating more value for customers and for all of us. Alvaro, can you comment a little bit on the go-to-market? Like how, how do your joint customers engage? What does that look like from their perspective? You know, when you think about the go-to-market, a lot of that is we have, you know, teams all over the world that will be aligned and working together in service of the customer. There's marketing and demand generation that will be done. There will be also uh, work on joint opportunities that we will manage, uh, as well as a very tight connection on projects to be sure that the support experience for customers is well aligned. I don't want to go into too much detail, but I would like to guarantee that our intent is not only to create an incredible technological experience, which the, the development teams have done, but also a great experience for the customers that are going through these projects, interacting with both teams that will work as one in service to empower the customer to achieve the outcomes that they need. Yeah, and just to comment maybe a little bit more on what Alvaro said, 
uh, you know, it's not just about the product integration, right? It's really the full end-to-end experience for our customers. So when we embarked on this partnership with Microsoft, we really thought about what is the right product integration and um, with our engineering teams, but also how do we go and um, talk to customers with value prop together and all the way down through to support. So we actually even worked on uh, how do we have a single joint support for a customer. So uh, it doesn't really matter how the customer engages. They really see this as an end-to-end single solution across two companies. And that's so critical given just the, the natural challenges that, that organizations face and the dynamics of the macroeconomic environment that we're living in for them, for customers to be able to have that really seamless single point of interaction. They want that consistent experience on prem to the cloud, but from an engagement perspective that you're, what sounds like what you're doing, Michael and Alvaro is, is goes a long way to really giving customers um, a much more streamlined approach so that they can be laser focused on solving the business problems that they have, being competitive, getting products to market faster and all that good stuff. Michael, I wonder if you could comment on maybe the cultural alignment that Nutanix and Microsoft have. I know Microsoft's partner program has been around for decades and decades. Michael, what does that cultural alignment look like from, you know, the sales and marketing folks down to engineering, down to support? Yeah, I think honestly, um, that was uh, that was something that kind of, fit really well and we saw really a lot of alignment from day one. Of course, you know, Nutanix uh, cares a lot about our customer experience, not just within the products, but again, through the entire life cycle uh, to support and so forth. And Microsoft's no different, right? Um, uh, there's a huge emphasis on uh, making sure that we provide the best customer experience. And then we're also focusing on solving real world customer problems, right? And really um, focused on the biggest problems the customers have. So really culturally, it felt it felt really natural. It felt like we were a single team, although it's you know, two large organizations working together. But it really felt like a single team uh, working day in, day out on, on solving customer problems together. Yeah, well, well said, Michael. Me... Go ahead. No, I will say, well said, Michael. I think that the, the, the one element that will complement, the, I think the answer was super complete is, the, the fact that we work together from the outside in, looking at it from the customer lenses, is extremely powerful and inspiring, as I mentioned, because that's what it's all about. And when you put the customer at the center, everything else falls in part, uh, on its, its own place very, very quickly. And then it's hard work and innovation and you know doing what we do best, which is combining our superpowers in service of that customer. So that was the piece that uh, you know I I, I cannot uh, emphasize enough uh, how inspiring it's been and again the res- the response for the preview is a is a great example of the opportunity that we have in there. And you've taken a lot of complexity out of the customer environment, and I can imagine that the GA of Nutanix Cloud Clusters on Azure is going to be a huge benefit for customers in every industry. Last question, guys. I want to get both y- your perspectives on. Michael, we'll start with you, and then Alvaro will wrap with you. What's next? Obviously, a lot of exciting stuff. What's next for the partnership of these these two superheroes together? Michael? Yeah, so I think our goal doesn't change, right? I think our North Star is to continue to make it easy for our customers to adopt, migrate, and modernize their applications, leveraging Nutanix and Microsoft Azure, right? And I think NC2 on Azure is just the start of that. So kind of maybe more immediate, like, you know, we mentioned, obviously, we have... We announced the GA, that's GA in Americas, but the kind of the next more immediate step over the next few months, look for us to continue expanding beyond Americas and making sure that we have support across all the global regions. Um, and then beyond that, you know, again, as Alvaro mentioned, it's working from kind of the clusters backwards. So we're, we're not, you know, we're not waiting for the GA. We're already working on the next set of joint solutions saying, what are other problems that customers are facing, especially across as they're running their workloads across on-premises and public cloud? And what are the next set of solutions that we can deliver to the market to solve those real challenges for them? It sounds really strongly that that the partnership here, we're talking about Nutanix and Microsoft, it's really Nutanix and Microsoft with the customer at the center. I think you've do- both done a great job of articulating that there's laser focus there. Alvaro, last word to you, what excites you about the momentum that Microsoft and Nutanix have for the customers? Well, thank you, Lisa, Michael. I will tell you, when you hear the customer feedback on the impact that you're having, 
that's the most inspiring part because you know you're generating value. You know you're making a difference, especially in these complex times when the, the partnership gets tested, where the, the right uh, you know, relationship gets built, where being there for customers is extremely inspiring. Now, as Michael mentioned, this is all about what customer needs and how do we go even ahead of the game, being sure that we're ready not for what is the problem today, but the opportunities that we have tomorrow to keep working on this. We have a huge task ahead to be sure that we bring this value globally in the right way with the right quality everywhere, which is a is never a small feast, as you may imagine. You know, the, the world is a big place, uh, but also the next wave of innovations that will be customer driven to keep and, and raise the bar on how, how much more value can we unlock and how much empowerment can we make for the customer to keep innovating at their own pace in their own terms. Absolutely. That customer empowerment is key. Guys, it's been a pleasure talking to you about the announcement, Nutanix Cloud Clusters on Azure. Avara, Michael, thank you for your time, your inputs, and helping us understand the impact that this powerhouse relationship is making. Thank you for having me, Lisa, and thank you, Avara, for joining me. Thank you, Lisa, Michael. It's been fantastic. I'm looking forward, and thank you to the audience uh, for being here with us. Yeah. Stay tuned. Exactly. To Thanks come. to the audience. Exactly. And stay tuned. There's more to come. Exactly. We have coming up next a deeper conversation on the announcement with Dave Vellante and product execs from both Nutanix and Microsoft. You won't want to miss it.